Vlogging on YouTube has been dead for some time now, which is unfortunate because vlogging is the perfect mix between curation and immediacy. By curation, I mean that the ideas in the video are well thought out. And by immediacy, that there is a secondary narrative taking place. That narrative being the actual life of the creator. I always found YouTube the most inspiring through the lens of Casey Neistat for this very reason. His vlogs were interjected, pointed conversations while he was pursuing the proof of work that was his actual life. He made it clear that YouTube, while amazing, was never the main thing. It was tangential to the mission, the mission of his life's work. Now, I would love to be a YouTuber like Neistat. In fact, I would love it if I could make vlogs single-handedly cool again, which is why for the next week of my life, I'll be living like Casey Neistat. Neistat begins his day early and with a morning run. While I've been a runner for some time now, I've never been an early bird. That changes today. 5.30. Never have I woken up and then just immediately started vlogging. It's a hell of a way to live. <laughs> People talk about pursuing their dreams for years on end, but often the work doesn't get started. Most screenwriters in LA, they all talk about their screenplay, and I was in the same position for years. I would say, I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna write this. The vision was always there, but I never put words to the page. I didn't know what to write, and I'd been trapped by fear. So right now we're about three and a half miles in. Gonna put in another. How much more am I gonna do? How much would Casey do? The exciting thing about starting one's day so early is that it's easy to put yourself in a position to get work done. All that cardio early in the day infuses the brain with BDNF. And even if you hate running, you'll feel more creative once you've taken all that oxygen. Now, I've been a YouTuber for some time now and can turn a video out like this pretty quickly. Although this is somewhat of a new format. That being said, I haven't actually ever written a screenplay before, and it's something that I'm very, very nervous about. I know I have many blind spots, which is why this week I'll be meeting with an old coaching client of mine who has a lot of experience with novel writing, and he even has ancestry that goes back to Ireland. He understands the Irish dialect really well. So we're going to be co-writing the rewrite of the screenplay together. Just like the big milestone. He has a connection in Dublin that has to be one of the plot points. Connections in Liverpool. And, and shooting like a one take dance sequence. Some people are dancing, some people are taking turns singing. It's fucking beautiful. Now, there were three big ideas that I basically picked up in my time doing this challenge. And the first of them that I really learned from Casey is this idea of just enduring, enduring the process, enduring the slog of things. Damn, bro, just blast it off. I always idolized him so much, but when he was starting that vlog, he was $200,000 in debt because of starting this tech company, Beam, with 38 employees that wasn't that successful. And that was something I never knew. I mean, I thought I knew a lot about this guy. And then the other day I had dinner with my dad, which is not something we really do. And he lost a hundred grand in the stock market in his thirties. And that was something I never knew about my dad either because I always saw him as the epitome of common sense. And I think a lot of times we feel all this pressure to have it together by a certain age. And when I turned 30 and then 31, I certainly felt that impetus. And in entrepreneurship especially, you will get hurt. It, it will happen. What is that saying? Like, winning feels better when you take a little damage. That's what I'd sort of like to think of and remind myself of. Let's go! one. I just decided to run the last lap with me. I think he's about halfway done. We need to give him some encouragement. People are watching. Let's go. One more, <laughs> baby. One more. <laughs> Jet thrusters. <-tested. laughs> Bro, not bad at all. And flat shoes. Oh God. Damn, dude, your pacing at the last lap really helped. <laughs> <laughs> the next big thing that this challenge is teaching me is that getting up early and starting one's day early 
is actually very, very beneficial. I've come to realize these last few days that if you can get a win as early in the day as possible, that's better than getting your first win later in the day. A good key component to a successful life might just be making sure that you get your first win as early in the day as possible. It's probably why Casey goes for a run first thing every morning. But I haven't always been an early riser, and in fact, getting up early consistently over the course of this challenge has also been tricky. Hello, and welcome to yet another beautiful morning. It's great, because I've already worked out and done a bunch of work, but I'm gonna take a nap. Casey has taken the occasional nap in his studio. He has this saying, a fool sleeps when he has to, a wise man sleeps when he can. Over the course of this week, it has been generating a lot of momentum to be getting up sooner. In the afternoon, I'm meeting up with my operations manager, Vincent. Vincent's been working with me and for me for almost five years. He was the first person who ever held the camera for me when I started this channel in 2018, and he continues to work with me today. So I thought I'd just give my two cents about vlogging because I have nothing else to do except walk back to the main location. But vlogging is essentially making something out of nothing. Because quite frankly, there's nothing around here. <laughs> I believe in keeping a lean and mean team, but I'm very grateful for the people I work with. Now the most important part of my day comes at around 4 or 5 p.m. I run a YouTube coaching mastermind in which I work with five or six people at a time to help grow their channels and make them more confident creators. If that's something that might be of interest to you, you can check out the first link in the description box below. But with that, I'm gonna get on with this meeting. Yeah, but it's happening. Like, this is the freaking vlog. Like, subscribe to the vlog, because the vlog is like... <laughs> The last of the three big ideas that I gathered from this challenge is leaving room for family time. When hustle culture was especially popular in 2018, Casey was one of the faces of it. But the truth is, the guy leaves plenty of time for his family. Six to ten, six to ten is family time and it's non-negotiable. And I realized that's something that I wasn't always doing. In fact, I would feel guilty spending time with other people. But this week, I hung out with a lot of people who meant something to me, including getting dinner with my dad. The people around us, they give us a sense of security and power. In fact, this is the component of the challenge that I'm so glad I pushed myself to do because at times I've sort of taken on a unnecessary monk mode, caused my own suffering just in the name of getting more done. And that's not how you should do things. Listen, leave some room for your family. When I started this challenge, I find myself at a similar position in life to where Casey was when he started his daily vlog. I'm no longer a fully young man. I'm now in my early 30s. I've got some experience behind me. When I started this channel five years ago, I definitely had a major chip on my shoulder. I was in my parents' childhood bedroom, a low paying wage employee, trying to find my way. And I would look at some of my inspirations and heroes like Matt DeBella, Nathaniel Drew, Peter McKinnon, and I couldn't fathom how I would ever make work that would ever be comparable to theirs. It felt so out of reach. And yet, five and a half years later, I have achieved some version of what I set out to do. And I also find myself at the bottom rung of a brand new adventure, one that feels far more daunting. It sort of feels equivalent to Batman being at the end of the first Christopher Nolan Batman film, where he defeats Ra's al Ghul, he has all his gadgets, he's got a partnership formed with Commissioner Gordon, and yet he's also graduated to having to deal with the Joker, a far more dangerous villain. The path ahead is certainly daunting, and yet I consider myself equal to the challenge. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nikhil. This has been episode one of a brand new weekly series where I document my journey to making my first feature length film in an effort to help inspire you to chase your own dreams as well. If that's something that appeals to you, then consider subscribing and we'll catch you in the next one. Greatness is coming.